Hello, and welcome back to the Star Family Wisdom podcast. I'm Jenna Layden, the founder of Star Family Wisdom and your host. I'm also a former global vice president for Whole Foods Market. And in the last few years, I've been on a profound journey of transformation and exploration into all aspects of myself, all aspects of the cosmos, the divine. And part of that exploration took me to the place of learning about Marguerite Rigolioso's work and engaging it to integrate past life wounds, past life gifts. And today I talk with Marguerite. Marguerite Rigolioso, PhD, is the founding director of Seven Sisters Mystery School. We interviewed her last year. We have the link to that episode in the show notes. If you missed it, check it out. But she has served as a teacher, a mentor, a mystery school leader, an oracle of the Dove Priestess, which I'll explain in just a moment. And she has developed a specialty around the divine feminine and understanding the place of the divine feminine in our world, in our history, and maybe some of the forgotten aspects of our story on earth. Marguerite, through her work writing numerous books, The Mystery Tradition of Miraculous Conception, Mary and the Lineage of Virgin Births, also the cult of divine birth in ancient Greece and virgin mother goddesses of antiquity. Through her work, she has developed numerous courses and offerings that support people in integrating this ancient wisdom. And as that has developed, she has also developed a special attunement to plant medicine, sacred cannabis, cacao, blue lotus, and she's teaching and offering a sacred feminine plant medicine academy this fall. So we come together today to talk about that and to talk about the role of plant medicine in our awakening, in our healing, in our ability to become open channels for the divine. And and we talk about ways to use plant medicine safely and and what people can expect in this academy because this is going to be a place where people can explore the plant realm in a safe sacred container and through marguerite's years of experience research you know she comes to the circle to the group with protection, with divine energies that uh, allow those who are present to have the right experience for them. So today's episode is a really fun one. Marguerite is just a, a wealth of wisdom and knowledge. And, and as I said before, you know, I've really, really gained so much in exploring her work. It's really connected the dots for me around many past life recalls I've had, many questions I've had around the history of my soul and and again what I'm healing and integrating in this life. So so I think, you know, many of us are on that path and and just by engaging, you know, with her work, you can have some of these same healings, you know, integration experiences or, or, or just, you know, rise to a new level of awareness. So without further ado, we'll get into the episode. Check out Marguerite's information below. We've got links to all of her um, new offerings, the, the Mother Mary Circle, which we talk about in the episode, her mystery school and her YouTube channel. There's a lot you can you can engage with. So check it out. And and I hope if you are you know feeling this call to explore plant medicine, deepen your connection with it, recalibrate your connection with it, access, you know, new aspects of yourself, 
that you explore this offering from her because you know we're now living in this time where this sort of offering is available and what an incredible way for us to to move through you know our ascension work together collectively in sacred space so check that out below and jump on it because i think it starts september 5th so so we've got just a couple of weeks before before that um, offering gets started so check that out and we'll see you on the other side welcome back to the show marguerite it's so good to see you again thank you so much it's really wonderful to be here jenna we just wrapped up a beautiful Mother Mary call, Mary and Mary Magdalene call that you do monthly. And it was um, a circle where we do ceremonial work. You guide people in ceremony to connect with the wisdom and energy and intelligence of these divine beings. And it was just such a beautiful experience. It was my second circle that I've done with you. So I just want to, to highlight that really quickly since we're coming off of that and, and, and get you, you know, your take on, you know, why do you think it's so important to connect with these divine beings right now? We're going to talk about plant medicine and, and so many new things that you're working on in today's conversation, but I just want to start there because that's fresh for me and I'm feeling the energy of that yeah. um, as we open this conversation. Yeah, it's really a great entry point for our conversation because it's so relevant to what's happening right now a virtual like explosion of energy around particularly Mary Magdalene, but also Mother Mary. And that's kind of what my work has been ushering in more. Like we've already been about 40 years now with the Mary revolution, the, the Mary Magdalene revolution. Now the Mother Mary awakening is coming with that and those two as co-partners. And they are the pinnacle of examples of feminine women who have done their incension work. Mm -hmm. They had human lives. They're working it on the inner planes. Mother Mary, you know, really accomplished what, what people would call full ascension, right? Meaning that she merged with the divine. That's what so many of us are wanting. And we're wanting it in body right now. And that's the Magdalene. She's the one who would bring heaven to earth seven times a day in her later practices we're all looking to amplify our light bodies, refine our physical bodies, but still be in them and enjoying them, um, transmuting our, our trauma and our emotional pain, um, bringing earth back into a realm of joy, right? And sometimes that can seem far away, but these beings who, who lived it, you know, they lived more than one lifetime on the planet. They're here on the other side as guides, as mentors and also healers and comforters, you know, so at whatever level, they're not the only grouping, they're not, you know, the, the be all and the end all, but they are very available to so many people. So if you're feeling any level of connectivity with them, I just invite everybody to call them into your life and see what they want to teach you, how they're offering healing, um, that kind of thing. And like you're saying, we do that once a month on the third Thursday through this Mary and Magdalene empowerment circle. It's a beautiful experience of really having um, a sense of the lived presence of these beings in our lives to change and transform our lives. And then we have this beautiful community sharing. I offer an Oracle, that kind of thing. So they, they are really on call, <laughs> on call available for all the shenanigans that have been going on on planet earth for quite some time, including the lifetime that we know of them as the Holy family right. when they were in, in the height at the height of the Roman empire. So, you know, they know all the tricks of what's going on to kind of, um, hmm, hold humanity back. And they also know a lot of the these pivot points to help humanity really do its growth process now in a big way. And when we come together in a group and with your expertise, the level of connection you've developed with these beings, 
we can receive their energy in more profound ways. That, that was my experience today mm -hmm. during during the, the circle. And um, I just highly recommend, you know, for anyone who's who's interested in deepening, you know, those connections, receiving that protective energy, as you said, receiving their support in in navigating all of all of you know the aspects of, of human life on earth it's so so important to come together in groups like that so so we'll put the links in the show notes for anyone who uh -oh. wants to to find find the circle and join and you know you've done so much so much incredible research and we're going to go into the plant medicine topic today but i I also want to highlight the the miraculous conception of what was it called the miraculous conception of mother mary i'm forgetting yeah, the exact it's, term right my most recent book the mystery tradition thank of you miraculous thank you which is <laughs> yeah, about mary you. and the lineage of divine births that have been throughout the planet for a very very long time Mary is the one most of us hear about, but this is a priestess practice that's available to women on multiple levels. And so, yes, that was kind of a, a big entry point for me into um, what Mother Mary and Magdalene, as it turns out, have been all about, about as part of their work, that bringing in the divine avatars to the planet, to walk on the planet. That's a huge role of service that women can do. And I'm recognizing now why I connected with you last year when I did, because I was already having some really profound and sometimes spontaneous past life recalls that were happening to, to help me meet my karma, to help me integrate, you know, my shadow and, and find all of the gifts, you know, that my, my soul is carrying. And it was so critical that I found your work when I did because I had numerous past life recalls related to ancient Greece, related to the Eleusinian mysteries, and finding your work helped connect the dots, helped me integrate, helped me heal aspects that I don't think I would have been able to heal without your work. And I know so many, you know, members of my audience, you know, of your community are, are, are on a similar path. And, you know, connecting with your books, reading, you know, the, the written material you've put together, I think can be a huge catalyst for that level of soul healing. So I just want to appreciate you and highlight that for the audience to just, you know, share how profound your work and research has been. And again, helping me connect those dots. So oh, that's you. so, that's so gratifying and couldn't come at a better time because <laughs> like everyone, I have my peaks and valleys and it's been a little intense lately. So it's so nice to have that mirroring, you know, that energy reflected back and um, it's very fortifying because that's what it's all about for me, right? To put things out there and help people get sparked. And then sometimes we forget that we are having an influence. <laughs> so thanks for reminding me, Jenna. <laughs> and, and it's my great joy. It's my great purpose. You know, it's part of my ministry in life is to do that work and then to, to be on my own incension path, you know, to really try to walk the talk, which doing both is kind of like it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. A balancing <laughs> act. Really, it, it's yeah. very intense right now. So yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. that <laughs> I can, I understand. Yeah, and I just I'm so so grateful. And, I, and you know, from what I felt viscerally, like the visceral memories and experiences that came back to me, you know, tell me, just tell me, you know, that there is so much truth in your your work you know i just i know it on a cellular level now like i just know it in my bones so so thank yeah. you and yeah that's great to hear and i do hear that from numerous people i have heard that over the years where they hear something read something see me on gaia tv or another interview or something like that and they're they were like truth instant you know chills uh tears dreams coming or like all the puzzle pieces suddenly came together in that moment and that is wonderful because we are reconstructing yeah. our memories our understandings of material and experiences that have been very much suppressed by forces that don't want us to have access to this information and this is really poking through in a big way right now as part of the whole collective healing so yes let's have that keep happening and thank you for <laughs> 
for finding me and yeah. um, speaking that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I share for those who are interested, I'll put some links in the show notes. I share on a couple of other episodes about those experiences more specifically for anyone who's curious, you know, about what that's like and, and what I've gathered, you know, personally for myself, but, you know, yeah. plant medicine also helps us open those channels and helps us access our own truth. And, and you've done, you know, incredible work researching, you know, both on an academic level, but also experientially in your oracle work, working with plant medicine and, and deeply understanding, you know, why it's beneficial and, and how we can work with it. And it's, and it, you know, it's becoming kind of popular from like a cultural standpoint, right? There's, there's that fine line between understanding the sacred aspect of plants and then, you know, the popularity they're gaining. So, you know, I, I want to ask you, you know, why, why now? Like, why are we, why are we reconnecting with plant medicine, like cannabis, psilocybin, lotus, blue lotus? Why are we connecting with these sorts of plant medicines now? And, and from your experience, you know, what, what about them, you know, can, can help us on this path on, on, you know, what we've just been talking about? Yeah, they are such great allies. And I do believe that the Holy Family and beyond were involved with some of these substances or the like. Um, there is a lot of evidence that in antiquity all over the world and in indigenous cultures all over the world, there have been medicines, um, potions created through plants that, that are mind opening and that women were largely the creators of these concoctions. You know, we see this in ancient Greece and Rome and, and beyond. With Mary Magdalene, you have um, the connection and the mention of the myrrh-bearing women. What was myrrh? What was it mixed with? How was it being used? Why would it be used for anointing? What, do, right? All these kinds of things. Um, I, my evidence shows that Mother Mary had, quote, a special diet as a child, what was in there? What was she taking, right? These kinds of things. So from time immemorial, the plants have been working with humanity, the plant devas, the spirits that come through the chemicals of the plants into the chemicals of the human body um, and begin to show us things. They, they are our friends, they are our allies, they are meant to be used with care with integrity, uh, with understanding, and they can really help accelerate that opening into deeper dimensional consciousness so that we can understand the meaning of our lives, what's on the other side of the veil, who they are, how we can work with them, how we can cultivate our own souls, how we can get on practical levels the guidance and the information that we need to live in, in a better or wiser way, energies of healing, right? Um, directives for, for what we are meant to do, cosmic information, right? opening us to the mysteries. All of this and more is possible with these plant medicines. And they are so powerful that they can catapult us in to domains that are we shouldn't be in or we're not equipped to be in or are a little bit scary. And that's why we want wisdom. We want wisdom teachings for how to work with these medicines. And that's where I come in. You know, I started working with these medicines uh, a few decades ago, like maybe two and a half decades ago. I was always a say no to drugs person. I, you know, I wanted nothing and no part of any of this. And I get got led in through my educational um, my alternate educational master's and PhD learnings and to some beautiful shamanic people in those worlds. And I was able to kind of go in and start navigating and then have my own sort of 15 year initiation into primarily initially um, a little bit of psilocybin, but it was a tough taskmaster for me. And then I moved to cannabis. That was more of a a better plant ally for me, although it kicked my butt too. And then I moved into Mama Cacao and Lady Lotus, Blue Lotus. 
primarily now I work with cacao and lady cannabis, which is a very strong activator for me. Cacao is, is yes, the consciousness and also the heart. So I need that healing. And um, so over the years, I've just developed my own ideas about how to initiate others into this, how to help them navigate with safety and joy, you know, exaltation, maybe avoid some of the pitfalls I have, avoid some of the pitfalls I've seen others get into that, that can be serious and have the best experience so that we can move into this fifth dimensional consciousness in an accelerated way, which is why so many of us have come to the planet at this time. Right, <clears throat> right. And the, the, the aspect of working in a safe way is something I you know, just want to, to touch on again. You, you mentioned, you know, your years of kind of training, you know, in, in learning, you know, what works, what doesn't, you know, how to use them in a, a, a protected way, because, you know, at least for, for my mind, it, it feels like they, they help reflect back to us, you know, what we need to see, you know, and so, sometimes that is our shadow. Sometimes that is something dark we need to deal with. And so, so, you know, people might be thinking, oh gosh, I'm nervous about that. I'm nervous about some of the stories I've heard out there about people's experiences. Mm -hmm. you know, what, what would you say to, to that, this idea of both, you know, having these expansive, joyful experiences, but then also, the reality of meeting some of the shadow, like what, right. what, what, what do you do? What are your, I guess, ideas about guiding people through that and, and how right. they can experience that in a, an easeful way? Yeah. Cause you can meet up with your trauma. You can meet up with your wounds. Yeah. You can meet up with your karma, meaning your transgressions in this and other lifetimes. Um, you can meet up with some pretty intense cosmic energies. Uh, and so what I would say is start going up the ladder of these plants. Some people, they love to throw themselves into the deep end of the pool. They're like, yeah, ayahuasca, going for it. <laughs> Philocybin, Amanita, I'm going. Uh, San Pedro, <laughs> uh, peyote buttons, yeah, I'm there. And they can have a variety of experiences. Some people have really wonderful experiences. Some people, it's like a real hell realm experience. Um, but how I'm doing it in the Sacred Feminine Plant Medicine Academy, which you know we're going to talk about that that this is uh, the second round of this offering this fall, 2023, as we record. Um, it's about stepping up, going up the ladder of these plants. So starting with the more gentle ones, which I consider to be the blue lotus. It's a much more subtle. You kind of linger at the threshold and it teaches you how to go just over that threshold back and forth. Like you're, you feel yourself somewhat altered, but you're not over your head. Right. Okay. You're not drowning for seven hours right. <laughs> in, you know, really a difficult situation. So we start people with that. Then we move them to cacao which is she's a mother. She will definitely open your awareness unmistakably, but it will be in a loving way so that even if you're encountering some inner pain, whatever, it feels productive. Like if there are tears, it's productive tears. If there is healing, it's productive. It's not just you're like writhing around on the ground, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's, and, and, and you, she teaches you how to open the heart. The heart chakra opening is something that so many of us need moving from the center of will to the center of heart. That's part of the moving into fifth dimensional consciousness at, at this time. And then I take people up into the cannabis, those people who can access it legally wherever they are. And that's going to be all over the world eventually. Um, how do with, with that amplified energy, how do you take the tools that we learn to create a protective space, create an intentional space and navigate what might be coming through for that? So that even if there are things that are of a higher intensity, you know how to resource yourself inwardly with your guides. You first set up strong protection and you have people you can contact, you know, somebody who's on the other end of the phone as a sitter or what have you, right? 
So those are the medicines that, that we use. And of course, you know, up from there would be the San Pedro, the uh, cactus, or the, psilocy um, the psilocybin mushrooms. Amanita is a stronger taskmaster. Um, then the ayahuasca, which can be really strong. And I think that's where you really want to have good sitters or good groups with a skilled shaman with those no shenanigans, no nonsense, knows how to set protection and hold space for people so that also if they are going through something difficult, you know, they can be held through it instead of re-traumatized, right? So um, stepping stepping it up. And, and, and I think that the three that I work with really give people an experience from, from low to high of, you know, what can go on, but within a protected boundary, that's also in integrity with the plant mm -hmm. and the traditions from which these plants have come. Those are other aspects that, that we, when we bring those in and we are respecting the plant Deva spirit, we are acknowledging her she's less likely to give you a hell experience, you know, if you are working in harmony, yeah. right? So that's part of it. It's all part of this awareness yeah. of working with the natural world. I, lo I love that, that I, that idea of the, the intentionality being so important. Like it, this is a, a being, you know, we're connecting with, we're, we're like sharing their consciousness basically, right? That's right. They are flooding in your body and they like to have that experience too. They like to be in the human body. Um, and it's what's generally missing when people start getting into these substances in whatever mishap, haphazard way, um, with no real consciousness, no real understanding, no real guidance, and they can they can use it and have downgraded experiences. Mm -hmm. They can have energies attached to them that that lead into addictions. Um, purposeless hell realm experiences, you know, those kinds of things can really happen, which shows you the lack of shamanic guidance mm -hmm. because so much of that has been suppressed, right? And then it gives the people who are like, no, we need to control all these substances rationale because right. yeah, you know, <laughs> some people can suffer. We want our kids protected, but the answer isn't just to squelch it. It's to teach everybody how to use them carefully and responsibly. Right. And to, to not dive into the deep end if you're not ready for it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because yeah. you know, it can have a really, really strong effect on your psyche, on your, your meshed energetic field. You know, you don't want to blow holes open. You don't want to do too much too soon. And that's why I also advocate the natural plants rather than the artificial or the chemically concocted plants, uh, plant mixtures and things like that. Right. Lab created. I'm just not an advocate of that. I do know a lot of people get benefit out of it. Yes, you can, but why not go back to the original, the plants, work with that and then see. And with the wisdom that the, the cultures who've been working with these plants for centuries, thousands of years have, have been right. able to generously pass to us. You mentioned that that's an aspect of what you bring to, you know, helping people navigate, you know, these, these plant realms. And, you know, I'm, I'm curious, you know, what sort of, um, I guess what stands out to you from from your connection with these various cultures and and the wisdom they hold about these plants of other than what we've already talked about you know what you know what what did they know that we didn't I, in the west for so long well and you know this is where i invite listeners to join us for that free call um on august 22nd seven mind-blowing secrets of blue lotus Mama Cacao and Cannabis, Lady Cannabis, because I'm going to be going into some of these tidbits extracted from the first round of the Plant Medicine Academy that we just completed, which people can have full access to when they join us for the fall. I had three beautiful teachers coming in, um, Helen Avitabile, who taught us about Blue Lotus, Angela De La Agua, who taught us about uh, Mama Cacao, and Connie Viveros, who taught us about cannabis. Amazing secrets and hidden histories revealed 
about these plants, the cultures they were connected with and so forth, um, very, very profound. And I learned so much, you know, just for example, Mama Cacao, how she's been connected with the Mayans. Mm. And yes, the Aztecs um, and other peoples, probably Toltecs, probably Olmecs of the Mesoamerican, what we call regions. But the history facts that Angela brought forth were truly amazing. And the same with cannabis. And I didn't realize how pervasive cannabis was in the ancient Western world and beyond. And how, lo and behold, gee, cannabis was probably at work with some of the Hebrew prophets and, right, some of the Hebrew priestesses yeah. and all of that, right, involved in these, in these um, mixtures that would be at the at the mystery celebrations to open people's consciousness. So I learned so much about these plants that then when I go in and have these experiences with them, it's that much richer because I've I've got now not only the plant, but the whole ancestral retinue with me, you know, helping to inform this. So that's just to to look at it on a on a generalized um level that the the intellect meets the intuition when you start learning about these histories and that is a really important part of the sacred feminine plant medicine academy at seven sisters mystery school mm, i love that the, what a good teaser for the call on tuesday we'll put the link to that in the show notes too okay. so people can sign up that's free so you'll learn yes. one more about the academy coming up and yeah. in in your uh, circle that you just led this morning. You talked a little bit about, you know, some of the current challenges that we're facing on the planet and, you know, this, this kind of passing through the eye of the needle that's happening where we're, you know, we're having to face a lot of hard stuff as a collective and, and, you know, transform yeah. that transmute it. And, you know, I'm, I'm curious from your perspective, you know, how, how can the plants help us through this time? Like what, what are your hopes, you know, for these plants, you know, in engaging the world in this time of transition? Well, a couple of things, one is healing and one is information. So we use these plants to access our own inner healing, um, access and soothe our emotions, receive light codes and comfort to to release the trauma fields and come back to our natural pure divine selves right and then the other thing is accessing them for information what's going on right. we can become our own oracles when we work with blue lotus lady mama cacao lady cannabis and the others to ask the question what were those fires about what is that um conflagration of tsunami over here about what is that supposed health crisis about and you start seeing it from higher dimensional perspectives and it can be both revelatory confirming and shocking mm -hmm. because once we start getting out of the program this is what the media is telling us is going on then we're like, oh my, there's a whole different other thing going on. But then we can continue to call on the plants for assistance with that. Okay, plants, you showed me that. You pulled the veil off of my eyes. Now I can see there are shenanigans going on. And now what? Because I'm not going to stay in trauma shock about that. What do I do? What do we do? Right. The plants are the portals for the information to come in from these higher dimensional beings, right? And if you're working with the Holy Family, it's always going to be a loving thing, um, right? So it's how to combine wisdom and love together to get the answers and the actions, the activism that we actually need on the planet to declare our sovereignty toward these travesties that are going on and, and being put on to see what it is and then to, you know, continue with our inner work to like 
radiate out this higher vibration so that those things start dissolving. Yeah. You know, it's like, a, it's not warfare. It's, it's a radiant radiance mm, that, that just kind of repels these, these energies and, and sends them back to their home. So that's how part of how the plants can work with us collectively and each person can get their in, their individual information on any given thing it's like it's like they just reveal truth and yes. then and then help us deal with that truth whatever that truth is it's like exactly they help us be productive about it they do yeah yeah they rather do than, rather than assuming the same force that's been happening in this world it's like we've got to we've got to come at it from a different angle now that's right because warriorhood engenders more warfare right. right so you want to be that what we might call the inner warrior but it's a whole thing of like unification of in of of duality rather than an expulsion right. of of energy to project out and and stop things going on from outside of us it's that inner coming together and then the radiance is from that. It's almost like there's a free energy machine that some of these people have made where they do a certain things with magnetics or whatever to the point where it's like, and then this like <laughs> yeah. blue white light starts in and then it starts radiating out. Okay. Numerous researchers have had that experience. Unfortunately, they send a vibration out that is identifiable they get found and there's been trouble for those people but the more and more we do that from within ourselves the more like these beings don't have the resources to keep up with each person who's going to become the radiant free energy light mm -hmm. you know uh, source okay and so we're working on the level of light here and the plants help us with that consciousness. Mm, I love thinking about that idea of the human body being the free energy machine, like being right. the, 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 the technology that can be activated. You know, I just did a video about DNA activation and this is making me think about that because it's almost like you know, we've got all these codes within us that are just waiting to get like turned on and the plants seem to do that they turn on that that light that's within us the 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 information within our dna that can help us hold that place of sovereign power which has been the tricky thing for humans it seems like is how do we how do we hold that place without succumbing you know to the negative stuff that that's happens. right yeah. and you know that's why learning how to do ceremony is important because you learn what I teach is, is for people to bring in their overall intention and then their questions, you know, there's six major questions to go into a ceremony because you could have a whole ceremony on activating your inner light, um, your inner free energy. How does that relate to DNA? What do I need to do? How do I teach this to others? Right. For some people, it, it could be anything like it's infinite what you can go into these ceremonies asking to receive information, codes, processes, and healing for. So it's like you could be there all day, all week, all year. I mean, not that we're saying to be horrible, <laughs> lying around to the opium den. You know, that's just, <laughs> that's another extreme of how it gets hijacked and used, yeah. right? You, you want to be in integrity. You want to be sometimes in that state, sometimes in third dimensional state. And the, the idea is the plants can help you merge those two. Mm, yeah. To be a bridge. We want to be bridge. More and more. Yeah. 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 You've, you've, you've talked about the plants as you know, mama cannabis, lady blue lotus. You, you've referred to them as feminine beings. Why do you refer to them as feminine beings? You know, it's how they present themselves to myself and others who I've been in communion with. Um, I, it was just an intuition when when I was taught by Helen Avitabile how to work with Blue Lotus. I just, the words Blue Lady Lotus came to me. I was like, wow, I know this is feminine. And then she said, well, you know, it is called um, Nymphaea Cerulea. 
blue nymph. Mm. The pet was, you know, the deva in the ancient world um, was the name of the plant. So I'm like, okay, right on. People have been converging, understanding this as a feminine valenced uh, plant spirit. Cacao, I just intuitively felt. And then, of course, what do you find out? She's called Ish Cacao, mother or, you know, goddess cacao, um, right? Cannabis, I really started feeling like she was feminine as well. And then Connie Viveros said that, um, yeah, I received in ceremony, she wants to be called Lady Cannabis. Mm -hmm. And that transmutes, first of all, that wasn't even the original name. You know, and I talk about some of the original names in the Sacred Feminine Plant Medicine Academy, which connect us with the stars. So, um, <clears throat> so, you know, it's all about intuiting that these particular plants strongly feel feminine. And this is the energy that we're needing to weave back into our world, right? So no surprise there. That makes so much sense that, yeah, we were just talking about this idea of not being in resistance or force ag against, you know, the, the negativity, but how do we yeah, embody that allowing it? But you mentioned earlier, holding up the mirror, like being a reflection for that negativity. And yeah, um, yeah that makes a lot of sense that the plants would do that. You know, we, you've talked about the Academy coming up and it's, it's going to be a, uh, multi-week adventure <laughs> with you you know what can what can people expect if they you know one if they haven't engaged in your offerings yet you know what's it like to be with you you know in these spaces and then you know what's the goal of this academy right so you know we encourage people to register for it soon it starts september 5th and it will run with five ceremonies through the end of October and two integration sessions so that people that can then come in without the medicine and say, hey, this would happen to me and they might have questions, blah, blah, blah. Um, we go through in these ceremonies, literally a fifth dimensional experience. I mean, people are altered, they're online, but it's safe. I've, told, I've shown them how to create a safe space within their own personal sphere. We create a safe space together we have intentions for each ceremony, like a theme. Um, people have some of their personal time. Then we have some collective time. And then I and others get all sorts of information that comes through that takes the group into, we didn't even expect, you know, <laughs> to go into these, these arenas and receive these levels of empowerments. It's profound when you're open in an, in an open state of consciousness with this. It's, it's, more intensive than just like even a meditation journey with people, which can be which can be very valuable too. But now that we're in the higher vibration of the plant, wow, right? And so people are exploring these medicines safely with support. Um, they can rest into it without having to effort or think too hard about what should I be doing now in this ceremony? You know, there's right. a structure. They've got their sovereign time for their own unique experience. And then they see what it's like to be in a collective because this is what we want. We want to be in a fifth dimensional collective ultimately right. in our world, right? So this is a little teaser, a testing ground. And so we're going to do one blue lotus ceremony, two cacao ceremonies, two cannabis ceremonies. And, um, you know, like the ceremony with blue lotus is about who are our star allies mm -hmm. and how could we best work with them? So that's what we're going to be focusing on for that. For Mama Cacao, we're looking at what the world ne needs now is love. How can we ground, amplify our love energy, and then use it to look at some of the more intense things on the planet, like the child trafficking. Okay, so we're going to get into it right? It's not going to be just all la la la, but how can we be useful here, right? Because child that. trafficking is happening now as it was in the time of the Aztecs. Yeah. And that's what I found out from Angela de la Agua, okay? Our minds were blown away when I received that piece of information in that class, which, which everybody can access because I want everybody to prepare by looking back at those um, teaching modules and everything. In one of the cannabis ceremonies, we're going to be looking at bringing on the fairies, these plant devas, 
starting with the plant deva of cannabis herself, right? But what is this fairy world, this she world all about? How and why do we want to work with these beings? What does that mean? How does that enhance our personal lives and our collective lives? Why is this so critical right now, right? Um, and then we're going to be working again with Mama Cacao to activate more deeply with the Holy Family. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my monthly Mary circle is everybody lifting up through a meditation that I channel. Now everyone's going to be channeling together with Mama Cacao how do we, you know, what's coming in? It's quite amazing. And it's not chaotic because I've got structures, right. you know, to help people do this. And then finally, you know, our last um, cannabis ceremony is going to be rocking it out with what I call Sophia, divine Sophia oracle wisdom, where people pick their own themes and they're going to have structured safety to like fly. Because the whole thing is about soaring as the medicine oracle, this round of it. And um, then we'll look collectively at how people have been evolved through the experience, through our communal sharing on, on the separate, so the separate integration sessions. So, I mean, to my mind, wow, anybody who wants a fifth dimensional awakening would love to be part of this. And I realize that there are some limitations for people with with cannabis legalities and illegalities, but you can go to a place where it's legal, get it and be with us online, right? right? Just travel, travel over the state border, travel over the country border, you know, whatever you need to do. Now is the time, right? Because we wanna move out of this sort of um, stonerism, okay? And the thing is that a lot of people in it have had negative experiences or they know they've kind of misused, they know they got addicted, blah, blah, blah. And in the teaching modules, we talk about how to work with that, how to re-engage with, with Lady Cannabis to release that because you are going to become the pioneer for addiction recovery for people with cannabis, right? As you start working with her, she's teaching you how to disengage from certain mm -hmm. spirits that came to you and just have you addicted, mm -hmm. right? So you become a pioneer of this, right? So this is part of, there's so many levels and layers and dimensions of what's happening. And we need to take advantage of the legalization, the increasing legalization of these substances, which Mama Cacao is legal everywhere, Blue Lotus most places, c cannabis is becoming. Yeah. Um, and work it and play with it. <laughs> I love it. And and what a like what an amazing container. You know, when you think about people going to, you know, a weekend workshop or one ceremony to have some sort of plant medicine experience, you know, you also don't get this the levels of integration that you That's need. Right. And I think this sounds like the right container to have these sorts of exploratory experiences and like an incredible value for all of that that you're providing um and and i'll just share you know for myself it sounds beautiful too to tran to to transition because i've been in this transitionary place with medicine you know for the first you know part of my adult life i overused cannabis a lot just yeah. just to like ease my anxiety about life right. and, and just, just make it through, you know? And so, so I've, I've been in this recalibration period around that. And so I just want to be honest about that, you know, with the audience that I think so many people are probably in that place, so but many. this, this is a good recalibration <laughs> opportunity. Yes. And also people do not need to ingest any of the medicines to be in the ceremonies with mm. us. And some people didn't, some people didn't engage the cannabis, but they showed up because they just wanted to be in the field of it ah. and working with lady cannabis that way. And they might work back into starting to take her back into their body in an intentional way, in a more healed way, in a way that's enlisting her support wow. in releasing um, addiction energies or patterns or things like that. So there's a lot of promise and possibility with this. And yes, you know, you are not alone in that. And a lot of people feel grief yeah. um, about that, that, wow, I mean, if only I had been led, if I had known, if I, yeah. right? So that's my intention here is to help give people either a rehabilitated experience or a positive 
first time experience that then they can go forward and not fall into those pitfalls. And toward that end, I'd love to have more younger people. Of course, we have people have to be, I think they have to be 21 or older to be part of the Sacred Feminine Plant Medicine Academy to even join. But um, ultimately, I see people going out and becoming teachers of this sort of thing and working with the younger people and so forth. I love it. Well, th thank you, Marguerite, for the, the offering and the opportunity to engage in that with you and your, your years of wisdom and the, the safe container that you offer. I think that's, that's so important. And for people who may be just finding you, can you share a little bit more about your other offerings and what might be important for them to explore or just discover through Seven Sisters Mystery School? Because I have found your offerings just incredible and just so rich and fulfilling in my journey. And I, I want others to find them too. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, I recommend people go to two places. One is sevensistersmysteryschool.com and the seven is written out. And I know you'll have it under the show notes. And just poke around our homepage. There's a free gift there. You can sign up for our Sacred Sunday e-news so you'll be kept abreast of everything that we're doing. Um, there are some best-selling courses that we have there for Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene, our, our Mary and Magdalene circle, like we were discussing at the beginning. Um, I have a course on the fairies that, that people tend to really enjoy and many other things. I do one-on-one -on -one work with people, right? So I have sessions with them for to support their healing, to support their spiritual deepening, their growth. They're putting the puzzle pieces together like you experienced uh, when you heard some of my material. Well, we go in, I go in deeper with people. I give uh, clairvoyant intuitive readings to help them see the broader picture and they experience a lot of validation and ahas and then next steps, in addition to healings. I mean, one woman thought she came in wanting next steps. And what ended up happening is we had a Mother Mary healing with her. And she was like, that was just what I needed, right? Um, so I work one-on-one -on -one with people in different, different capacities. And um, I also work with people who, ha who have a book in them. I book shepherd people. I've book shepherded several authors to publication. Um, and then I recommend that you go to the Marguerite Rigoglioso YouTube channel on which we have many, many of my video interviews from, from podcasts, from YouTube channels, from um, summits and things like that. And you can just be a kid in a candy store <laughs> listening to a lot of material there that will spark your own knowing, your own memories, hopefully your own healing. And um, so come back, stay close to us, you know, find out what we're doing and partake every now and then. There's, yeah. a, there's a deep well to dip into, to dip your cup into. And a big community that you've, you've yeah. developed over the years. So yeah. So yeah, I, I'm just so honored and grateful to, to get to talk with you today about all of the things, including our, our plant allies and, um, and to honor them and their wisdom and them shepherding us, you know, through this time of, of change on the planet. Um, we need to wrap up in a few minutes. So, so I want to, you know, just ask from your, I guess, personal perspective, you know, what's been the most profound thing that you've experienced, you know, working with the plants, you know, when you think about your personal journey, it's, it's been a, a big one. You've had big Dharma in this life to, to complete with your work. And I'm sure the plants have, have helped with so much of that. You know, what, what comes to mind is like one of the most profound things that you've, you've experienced. Yeah. I would say two things. Um, the plants, in those experiences, I was confronted with my karma, mm. with transgressions that I had done in previous lives on and off planet. And that was a huge reckoning. And that, that took about 20 years and maybe is still going on, although it's easing <laughs> into other directions now. But they humbled me. Um, and then they gave me through them i would also have the experience of ecstatic communion with the divine 
through what I call the halls of a mentee or the Sophia Oracle knowing. That to me is just a thrilling place of having this wisdom pouring through you, having access to it. It's it's the place I love the best. It's what I love the most. When I am in that state working with others, like in the Mary circle, it's pure joy. It's like I am at complete peace in the balance point of my life and the meaning of why I came here in those moments. Wouldn't I love to like live from that feeling all the time? You know, that's what we're working on. Um, but, you know, the karma there, I, I've had a lot of healing to do for myself, a refining of my personality and how I interact with people, right? All of that very human stuff, yeah. <laughs> along with the halls of a mentee. So it's been like, yeah, you know, reality. a two-pronged <laughs> situation for me in this lifetime. And it again, it just keeps me humble, essentially. Yeah. So, so I, I think that that means the audience, whoever, you know, engages with your work is in good hands because you've, yeah. you've experienced, you've experienced it all, you know, it seems like in terms of what we're meant to experience. Yeah. And I am well aware of my shadow and my shadow aspects. And I kind of share it with people. So then they feel, feel at ease because one thing you don't want to get with is a teacher who's like all love and light. And then you know, it's, there's a horrible shadow there that's not being acknowledged. And we all know how these gurus and teachers have ended up. Yep. <laughs> so, and I get a lot of the refugees from it, having sure. a heal from that type of stuff, you know? So you want to be a trustworthy teacher. A trustworthy teacher is somebody who is, has been confronted and is kind of every day with their own stuff. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the hard work. That's the balance yeah. in it all. <laughs> yeah, that's the hard work. Yeah, it's like, how, how do how do we yeah do, do that, but keep moving towards the, the higher octaves, right. the higher expressions of what's possible. And yeah, it's, it's hard work, man. Because <laughs> it, it really is integration, you know, yeah. you're never just like, Phew. it's like the dark and the light have to come together within the the human self and yeah. that's what it's all about the embrace of the totality that's the yin yang right there yeah so yeah yeah i think that's what drew me to your work and, and to you you know there's there i, I think i shared this on in another episode recently that i you know i've had a, a little bit of a resistance to certain teachers and definitely to guru culture for a long time until i reconnected with sri kaleshwar which we'll talk about hopefully at some point that's uh, right <laughs> yeah you know and it's good that he's like on the other side because right. there's shenanigans that can happen exactly in the, in the community <laughs> you know yeah. like i always say wow i picked a dead guru you know <laughs> because yeah, that's like, how i felt too <laughs> yeah you know i never wanted that guru path and i'm Me like too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you. thank you for your, your teachings that are ongoing. And I am in my one-on-one -on -one relationship with you. And I am not really engaging in any shenanigans that could go on with the community yeah. around you. And thank you. <laughs> Agreed. Well put. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, yeah, I think that's what drew me to you is this, this just knowing that you're, you're in that work, you know, you're, you're doing the real work, which is, which is hard and, and, profound and important. So, so thank you, Marguerite, for, for being with me today. It was such a joy to, to be able to talk and, and share about your work and how people can, can engage with it and hopefully have their own profound transformation along the way. Absolutely. That's the idea. Thank you so much for being receptive, for having me and um, for all the work you're doing and for being such a beautiful interviewer as well, Jen. Thank you. Thank you, Marguerite. And for those who, who are interested in all of the, the offerings, check out the show notes below. We've got links to the Mother Mary and Mary Magdalene circle that happens every month. We've got links to a few of Marguerite's courses and, of course, the upcoming Sacred Feminine Plant Medicine Academy. So jump on that because we're getting close to the start date. And uh, comment below. Let us know if you've had any profound experiences or what you might be looking forward to and in those future experiences as you engage with Marguerite. 
and uh, we teased a little bit about the Sri Kleshwar connection. So hopefully that's right. we'll the Holy Moon Chakra, that's a whole other place that yeah. converges with the Marys, but we didn't even go there. So that's its own topic. So hopefully we'll right. come back together to, to chat about that at some point soon. So, yeah. so thank you everyone for tuning in and we'll see you next time in our next episode. Bye for now.